Hey there, Sam. Suppose we're building an app and our database looks something like this. We have a company model and one company can have many users and one user can have many posts. And now let's try to build our API. So here I have a fresh Laravel installation and I have set up a few files in advance. I've defined the relationship in the user model and also the company model and created the API controller files using the Laravel make command. I've also added the API routes for companies and users and also some dummy data in my database. All right, let's get started by creating the resource class for company and user. We'll go to terminal, PHP artisan, make resource, company resource, and also user resource. That will take care of the boilerplate for us. Now let's go to the company resource class. I want the API response to return the company ID and also all the related users inside the company. Since we have already defined the user relationship in the company model, we can just load the users right away. And to keep the API response consistent, we should wrap our users in the user resource class by the collection method. So far, so good. Now let's also do the user resource class. For the user, I also want the API to return the ID and also the user's company data. And similar to the company resource, I can just type it new company resource, this company, right? I'll give you one second to think about this. Time's up. The answer is hell no. Why? Because in our user resource class here, we are loading the company relationship in the company resource class. And in the company resource class, we are loading the user's relationship in the user resource class, which will then load the company resource class again and on and on and on. Can you see how this could bring us a massive disaster? And this is definitely not the right way to load API relationship. So what options do we have? Well, we could ditch the resource class completely and load the relationship directly, right? That's an option, but we can no longer guarantee our API will be consistent. As your app grows larger and larger, it becomes increasingly difficult to control what goes out from your app. And that's why we need this resource class to help us manage our outgoing data. Not using this resource class is just another path leads to disaster. So hell no. So what's the better option then? The answer is eager loading. If you're not familiar with the terms, here's a brief overview. There are three different ways to load a model relationship in Laravel. The first way is called lazy loading, which is the default way to load a relationship just like we did in our app at here. So lazy loading means to load the relationship on demand. The relationship will remain as a placeholder until it's actually being used. The second way is called eager loading, which simply means to load the relationship at the time when a query was executed. So the relationship will always be there regardless whether the data is being used or not. The third way is called lazy eager loading. This is a scenario where we load the relationship eagerly after the query was executed. Let's go through them one by one and see how can they solve our problem here. Let's go to company controller and the index method will load companies with users eagerly loaded. We can do that by using the with method from the model. The with method accepts an array of relationships as defined in the company model and eloquent will load these relationships eagerly when the query is executed. Then we'll return the company using the company resource class, calling the collection method and pass in the paginated companies. So now all the companies passed into the company resource class would have users eagerly loaded with them. Let's go back to our company resource class and now we we'll need to fix how we load our users. And again, by default, Laravel loads the relationship lazily and we need to stop doing that. We can call the when loaded method on the model to only load the relationship when it has already been eagerly loaded. So if the company does not have users eagerly loaded, the users fields will be omitted completely. What's the benefit of doing this? You'll see that in a minute. This is where we start breaking the infinite loop. Now let's go to our user resource class. We'll create a new variable. Company is equal to this when loaded company. So here we're basically saying that we only retrieve the company relationship when the current user model has eagerly loaded company. In other words, if the user model passed on to this resource class does not have company eager loaded, the company variable here will be empty. And this is exactly where we break the infinite loop. Let's walk through everything once again. First, we start at a company controller. We first retrieve our companies with users eager loaded, then we pass them into the company resource class. And in the company resource class, we will retrieve the users loaded and pass them on to the user resource class. A very important note here is that the user relationship loaded here, they do not have company eager loaded with them. So that means in the user resource class, our company variable here will be empty. And if company is empty, and therefore you will not trigger the relationship loading in the company resource class, which is equal to breaking the infinite loop. 
So now that means we can safely pass this company variable to our company resource class down there. Let's run PHP Addison serve and we'll test our API in the browser. And we get a beautifully formatted JSON response without any infinite relationship loading. And just a note, if we have nested relationship, we can use a dot notation in the with method. For example, just for demonstration purposes, let's go back to company controller. If I want to load the company again for each user, I can put dot company right after users. Let's go back to the browser again. And now each user will have a company attached to them. This example probably wouldn't make sense. It would be better if we change company to post, which we haven't implemented yet. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about before we end the lesson. For the show method, since Laravel has already resolved the model for us, we no longer need to construct a query and therefore won't have access to the with method. So instead of using with, we can call the load missing function from the model directly. It works like the method with, but it's only callable on the model instance. So we are essentially eager loading the user relationship after the company model has been resolved. This is also known as lazy eager loading. Let's try this out. We first need to add a show route. Then we go to the browser and view company ID 1. And that's it. Key takeaway for this lesson. Eager loading means loading the relationship at the time when the query was executed. We use the with method on queries to perform eager loading. Lazy loading is the default way that Laravel handles relationship loading. It loads the relationship on demand and the relationship will remain as a placeholder until it's actually being used. Lazy eager loading loads a relationship eagerly after the query was executed. We use a load missing method to perform lazy eager loading. Eager loading can help us to break the infinite loop when we load relationship in our resource class. That's it for this lesson and I'll see you again shortly. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.